Can you hear me all right? Awesome. Um, wow. Um, the previous three talks were so good. I hate all of you. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I used to work at the MBA, and um, on MBA.com, like, my moral enemy was the Facebook like button, so, like, learning about how, although I don't work there anymore, so I'll have to show them that talk, because they still haven't solved that problem. Um, and, like, one of my best friends, Brian, taught, I, that's not the first time that I've listened to Black Flag at 4 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, and then my other great friend, Brittany, now I know why my brain thinks I'm hungry all the time, because I am. Um... So happy to be here in Norway. When I worked at the NBA, we used to do a stream of Instagram photos for the NBA finals, and the most fun photos came from Norway, which was very odd to us. We were used to more like activity from China and stuff like that. So if you're like a basketball fan, see me after. We can talk about the playoffs and stuff. But much like my coworker and pal Brian, I have um, some music to play for you. Um, this might be weird. Any La Tigra fans in the room? <laughs> okay, cool. So bear with me. I'm going to play a very short clip of this video. And it is very important for the context for the rest of my talk. Can you take the bomb? <laughs> I'm going to stop it before the vocals um, because they're not really necessary for this. But um, this video uh, came out in an album in 1999. Um, I was in high school, and I was not really too much into La Tigre. La Tigre is a focal point of the Riot Girl movement. Um, I was more into like male-fronted grunge and like Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Nirvana, and stuff like that basically because I was raised by my father and just introduced to like more male-driven music. Um, but this song, Decepticon, um, was, there's just like, one of the things that like I really used to express myself in high school were these things, um, hair, art, music, and then code. Um, there wasn't really much else that I can do. I never really went out too much. I studied a lot, but like my hair, I just like let it do whatever. That was like my one thing I could just like not really care about. Um, and art, I love drawing. Um, I love listening to and creating music. And then got into code at the end of high school uh, and went to college for computer science. So that was sort of like my four main things in 1999. And not much has actually changed uh, since then. Um, but Decepticon the Tigers video really like was something that I connected to, not so much because of the Riot Girl movement, but because I really liked lo-fi, low fidelity stuff. And this video is kind of as low budget and lo-fi as it gets. Um, it kind of looks like it could have been done as a cartoon, but they had like sort of a competition and like the these dancers, this choreography won. And really that's the entire video is this them bopping around on the stage. Uh, kind of in sync with this like weird kind of like creepy backdrop that kind of looked like my first like apartment I lived in um, with like blood red walls. Um, I was super into it. Um, the song starts out with them saying, who took the bump? Uh, and whenever I play this song for people, people are like, what is, what is the bump? Like, wh what does that mean? Uh, and that harkens back to doo-wop music, which is something I, the type of music I was also really into growing up because of my father. Um, and who here has listened to doo-wop? Okay. So we started in African-American communities um, in the United States in the 50s, and then it sort of moved towards like more Italian-American groups in the 60s. Uh, and they used a lot of like weird like words, like just like non-lexical vocalizations. Um, you would hear them singing bomp, 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 and shang lang which is what ES6 was going to be called. I don't know why that didn't work out. Um, <laughs> bip a dip a dip that also, um, ram a lam and ding dong. So like you've heard these in like older songs and stuff like that. Um, and then Barry Mann, I think 1961, wrote the song Who Put the Bomb? 
um, where he asked a very important question. Who put the bump in the bump, a bump, a bump? Who put the ram in the ram, a lamb, a ding dong? Who put the bop in the bop, shoe bop, shoe bop? Who put the dip in the dip, the dip, the dip? No one on Stack Overflow has answered this question yet. <laughs> it's really distressing. Um, and basically the song was about how um, he was able to, he sort of like had a woman fall in love with him while this type of music was playing. And it was just like, how is this music that's like lyrical nonsense so catchy and like touching that like something like young love can happen while this is going on? Um, and then the Tiger song is more of like a politicized version where like, how come we're making music that's political and means something, but people are listening to like this kind of nonsense? And how do you sort of break through to that? At least that's my interpretation of it. Um, and you might be wondering, what, what does all of this have to do with JavaScript? I'm wondering too. Um, but I made it work into JavaScript. Um, so the title of my talk is Who Visualized the Bomb? My name is Jen Schiffer. I am a, an engineer at Boku with Brian. Um, I also am an artist. I make pixel art, work with color pencil, and also now digital art, creating visualizations using audio and movement. Uh, and that's what I'm going to talk to you today. Um, before I go into the code, um, some of the snippets will use the Moz prefix, because I wrote this in Firefox, but you can replace it with WebKit, O, oh, and all this stuff like that. This is just dealing with CSS transforms and animations. Um, I use SAS as a preprocessor, so when you look at my code um, snippets, most of them just have straight up CSS, but if you look at my source later on, um, you'll be like, what is this nonsense? It's SAS. So here is a screenshot of that video, and I am going to create this in the browser, not perfect, even more lo-fi than this. Um, and so you can do that with CSS. Who here is drawn with CSS? Like taken shapes, positioned them, colored them, super tedious, pain in the butt, but it's cool. Um, you can't really use a Sharpie on your monitor screen. Your job isn't into that. So this is really the only other way um, you can draw. Well, you can use Canvas also, but I have first CSS. So here is my backdrop. Um, I had the ladder, a little doorknob and stuff like that. It's kind of similar, just as creepy, if not more. Um, and this is the HTML. Again, very tedious. Um, there's a lot of, I learned the parts of a ladder doing this. So really, it's, this is an interdisciplinary project. Uh, <laughs> so Brittany, Brittany builds her own furniture, and now I'm going to like start. No, I won't. Don't worry. Um, and so then I have the dancers. This is the most important part, because this, the scene in the video doesn't change at all. It's the dancers that do all living around. So I drew the dancers. <laughs> this is even more tedious because right now, like the body looks like just one piece, but it's actually many. There's a torso, and then they have two arms, and then the arm has the bicep and the forearm and the hand. See, I learned the parts of the body. Uh, <laughs> legs, you have the thigh, the calf, and then you have the foot, and then like the foot always moves with the calf, so like that's within it. And then you know you have the head and the glasses and the shades. It 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 gets the job done. So yeah, here's all the dancer code. Um, I have a left dancer, and then I have a right dancer. Um, and I put the items that are moving with the other, you know, body part within it. So, like, the hand bones connect to the forearm bone. Um, and there you go. And then there's a lot of CSS, whatever that means. Um, a ton of it. Again, it, it, you have to position everything um, perfectly with the video and also make sure that as you're moving things, everything moves along with it. And also just trying to match the colors up to make it as similar as possible. Um, so the first step that I want to do, and in the video, is that they move side to side, like across the room, um, which we've done marquee stuff before. Um, so this should be like simple enough. And so like this is that code. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I'm like, wait, I've been using like the marquee tag forever. I'm super into it. Like, what's going on? And I go on the W3C like wiki, and they're like, don't use it, which is kind of garbage. You see, there's your dolphins battle. Uh, 
So I use CSS keyframes and animations to bring marquee back. A lot of people have done this. Um, it's really interesting that we have to, but I get it. You know, marquee is like an animation, and why would HTML should be content, be animating, and also with CSS we can control it. We can make it faster or slower, not as nearly as obnoxious as marquee is. So what happens is when the dancers have a class called marquee, I have a, an animation that runs infinitely. Uh, we're gonna put those dancers to work. Uh, and the animation's called marquee. And then I use keyframes here to set the position at different times. Um, and so I'm gonna be moving it to the left, um, moving it to the left 130 pixels, which really is moving it to the right, uh, moving it back to the original point, negative positioning it, and moving it back to the point. So they should be sort of moving back and forth across the stage. How many people, like, if you can do this, you can dance. So you all can dance now, right? So CSS is great, but I can't just, like, put it in there and expect the dancers to start working unless I start them off with that marquee class. But I don't want them to, because in the beginning of the video, they're stationary. And also, there's a point where, like, if you pause the video, they stop. So I added key events so that when I press the arrow keys, then JavaScript is like, okay, cool, I'm gonna add the marquee class to the dancers, and then they will move. Um, and I'm gonna have some jQuery in here, I know that upsets some people, um, but it's okay. Um, so, I have a key press function um, called on the, the body of the page, because the whole page is sort of this video. Um, and I have a switch statement. Um, somebody had asked me like, what was like, one of my favorite things about being a programmer, and like they were asking as like a philosophical question, and I took it really literally, and I said, switch statements. Uh, <laughs> not like, oh, I love the people and the conference, like, no, switch statements. Uh, so in the case that you typed an arrow, I toggle a class marquee. Um, some of you might be tempted to just use the CSS function to change the properties within it. It's highly inefficient use classes and toggle them. Um, because also I want to allow them to start moving and then if I hit the arrow key, have them stop um, moving. Um, because you know I might want them to be stationary in the video at some point. So that's why I use toggle instead of just add class. Uh, and this is where a whole bunch of other cases are gonna end up going as I add more dance moves and, and fun things. So let's see them do their movement. I hit the arrow key and here they go. Yeah, it's easy. They look dead. This is not, it's not, I'm not into it. Um, I also added a key event um, for the space bar that removes all of the classes from the dancers, which therefore stops all the animations. So, marquee is now undeprecated. You're welcome. So now we want to add some like cool dance moves. Um, so like, I want to like have them bop their heads a bit, you know what I mean? Get into the music. Um, so bopping the heads just sort of transforms, rotates their heads back and forth, negative 10 degrees to 10 degrees. Um, transfer origin is the center of origin of the head. If you don't change it, their head will just sort of like rotate on one point and like this, and like that's not bopping. We want to do this. So let's bop it. Um, because I am super into myself, all of the keyboard shortcuts on here, like all the key events, are letters in my name. So like, let's start with J. And then they're like sort of up in their head, you know what I mean? And you can have all of them go on at the same time. Now they look dead, but like, I don't know, like, I, it's still not into it. So one of the first moves they did was they were just sort of like jogging and like th moving their forearms up and down. Um, they weren't doing this, so each forearm has to move at a different rotation uh, at a different time. Um, and so the bend arms class first moves their forearms up because as they're rotating, there'll be like a space between where the uh, bicep ends um, and where the forearm is because it'll be rotating down here on like this axis. Um, and so I move the forearms up to hide that. It's a cool, cool uh, life hack, biology CSS hack. Uh, and then uh, I, add, I have two animations, arm bend left and arm bend right, because 
I don't have them moving at the same time. I have them moving in opposite rotation. So that's why I set it that way. And I just rotate them 0 deg degrees to 180 degrees and so forth. So the next letter in my name is E. So E moves it back and forth. Kind of cute. Still boring. So let's like have them move their legs. Um, and so it's very similar. Um, I have another um, animation besides just bending the legs called body rock because when you're moving your legs up and down, your body doesn't just stay stationary um, unless you're into like Irish dancing. Um, but we're not in Ireland. So we are going to have it sort of rock back and forth as we're jogging up and down. Um, and that's what the body rock animation does. And then leg bend left and leg bend right do stuff similar to um, the arms. So let's watch these guys jog. The next letter is N. So now when we're moving back and forth, it makes a little more sense. They're not so dead looking. There you go. There you go. So they're dancing to nothing. I've danced to nothing. I listen to my headphones, and like I've been, I was one time in a, a convenience store, and I was like just dancing to music because I'm just super obnoxious in public and embarrassing. And someone was had like tap on my shoulder and like you look really weird dancing to no music. And I'm like I am dancing to music. Um, those guys look really weird dancing to no music. Um, and so we want to add music to it. Um, and so there's this great thing, the Web Audio API, that I've recently gone into where I'm able to play a song and use JavaScript to sort of mess around with it or even tie it to what's going on in the browser. So I have three functions, load song, load audio, which you guess it loads the audio. Um, I have um, a URL of where my audio clip is. Um, and then the buffer waits for like what the sound is going to be. And then I have key events to play the song. So I have um, the F key uh, to play. And then I have pause song, which figures out the current time of the song so that when I hit R, it will pause it. And then if I hit F again, it will start playing at the same point. So you're not restarting the song each time. Um, and use an audio context. If you've used Canvas, you're, you've dealt with context before, and everything is done upon that. And so I call load audio, and it loads it. And then it just waits for me to press the key to play it, which is really simple and, and cool. So let's see if you could play some music. Now, you might recognize the song. This is a MIDI file from like my collection. This is, you, locals might know this song. I'm going to start sort of messing around. And then I stop. I paused it. Um, part of the key event for pausing the song, I also want them to stop dancing, because again, they look ridiculous when they stop dancing. So. Whenever I have, when I, whenever I press pause, I save what the classes on the dancers are. So at that point, it was just moving their arms. Um, and then when I replay, the event like adds those back again. So when I restart, they start dancing again. There you go. So it's really simple to create this sort of interactive, just like live visualization like thing um, involving key events, which most of us have worked with about moving shapes around with CSS. Um, and you can also add pretty much anything else now that we know how simple it is to add things. And most of us know JavaScript or CSS um, and stuff in the browser. Really, like there's so many things that we can do. Um, so I can start. Have them all do everything at the same time. And then you could like add more fun stuff, like a cat. You could also add more audio context and more audio clips to it. So like 
Damn, son, where'd you find this? Man, it's a hot one. It's more smooth. Well, there you go. And then you can just have that going on as, as long as you want. So what just happened, you might be wondering. <laughs> So what we did was we created like visualizations in the browser without like fancy schmancy software, although you might have used fancy software to make a cool MIDI of AHA's take on me, um, or you could just ask me for mine. Um, how did we do it? It was just not that much code. Um, little, I mean, tedious HTML and CSS, that's probably the hardest part, um, but a little bit of JavaScript, a little bit of knowledge about key events and also just sort of imagination with like what kind of dance moves do you want to do. And if you watch La Tigre's Decepticon, they do some like funny stuff. There's some like cool like kicking to the side, going back and forth, um, spinning around and, and, and shaking hands and stuff like that. And when you have the body parts separated in the HTML like you do, you really have total control over the movement. Again, it just takes a, a lot of work to like position everything perfectly. It's a lot of trial and error. But it's fun, you know what I mean? Just like when you're making a painting, there's a lot of just a long process, but then your product at the end is like, wow, I put a lot of work into it, and this is like really cool and ridiculous. Um, who did it? We just did it. Why? That's the number one question. Like, why would you do something like this? Um, because it's fun, that's like the main reason um, programming should be like a fun, cool thing to do. Um, also, it's practical. Um, the arts and entertainment industries, um, it's using browser technology for visualizations and film and audio is becoming quite pervasive. Um, I am now an artist in residency at this place called the Made in NY uh, Media Center in New York City. And they basically help do funding for all filmmaking in New York. And they're kind of trying to keep people from like having to leave the East Coast to go to LA in order to make movies and, and all that sort of stuff like that. Um, and so they have me, I'm basically like co-working for free with a bunch of awesome filmmakers, documentarians, and also artists, comic book artists, um, VR people. And we're all just collaborating and like making cool stuff. And I'm sort of like, the in-browser person, and yeah. Um, there's also really cool events that do visualizations live while performance is happening, which is like what I'll be working on this summer. So there's this event called Pulse Wave. Um, you can go to pulsewave.org. It's like a chiptunes music series that happens every month that my friends run. Um, there's also one in, um, I think there might be one in San Francisco or LA. Um, those aren't real places anyway. Um, but there's a performance happening, and in the background there's visualizations, and you, you might not see, but like, right in front of that yellow, there's a guy crouched down in front of a laptop, and he is making those visualizations happen while the performance is going on. And it's just like a super cool looking space, and it's just super easy to make a performance much more dynamic and fun. Um, and those organizers also help out with something called the Low Level Festival, which is also in New York, um, where it's like a larger scale festival. Um, more visualizations. I love lights. I just love lights and projections. This is why I'm sort of drawn to this sort of thing. Uh, so if you're ever in New York, let me know, and I'll like take you to some like cool light-driven uh, events. Um, then there are like random weirdos playing rock music. I'm just kidding. That's Brian's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there. Um, so like he showed a photo of his band at their like, I think that was your record like release party and like work full of visualizations while cool music is happening. And again, when you're in New York, let me know and hopefully his band may be playing and yeah, you see it because it's like really awesome. Um, and there's like lots of really cool art spaces in New York where you can just like see a show and even if you're not really into like live music, which one was wrong with you? Um, <laughs> You might be into like the lights and the visuals and even just like the art that like might be there, which is like why I love New York so much. Um, and then the Made in NY Media Center, which I mentioned I'm an artist in residence at until October, um, has a really cool media gallery that you walk through um, and like a lot of projectionists work there and they will have visualization showing as you go through on screen and projected onto the wall. Um, the latest installation was by a guy who does the visualizations projected at Soundgarden concerts, which I'm super into that. <laughs> That's like my dream job. Um, 
and it's just like super cool, and it's a really fun place. Like I work out of like this common space. Well, this is the common space that's empty right now. But behind it is where the artists um, and the documentarians and filmmakers work, and there's just always weird visualizations happening on the wall all around us. So like we're in this really cool space where like all this art is happening. And it's really easy to do that at your own office. All you need is really a, a projector. And there are tablets that come with projectors attached to it. So like if you're working in an office and you want like instant art that can change all the time, you could like make cool stuff in the browser. You can like take that thing that I made and like mess around and annoy your coworkers in the office and it will be great. And that's another picture of that. And also, like, whatever, like, I've spoken at conferences about using art to, like, learn code. Like, I feel like a broken record, but for those of you who've never seen any of my talks, like, using art is a great motivation to learn how to code or to learn new concepts in programming. Um, I learned about CSS animations by doing this project because in my daily work at Boku, I'm working on a, a website for a, a public radio station um, that doesn't involve CSS animations at all. Um, and before that, I was working on stuff with Couch and then a healthcare company and the NBA, like, never really had an opportunity to mess around with CSS animations, which is why I love giving talks because it forces me to do that sort of stuff. Um, and so this art project was a motivation to learn something that could be useful to me. And I learned about efficiency of animations in CSS versus JavaScript and stuff like that. So if you want to get into a type of a language or a framework or anything like that, and you're not sure what you want to make, you don't want to make another to-do app or another Twitter client, like, come up with, like, some, like, dumb art project like I do, um, or find something that's already been done and, and recreate it, because I love recreating the wheel. Um, and yeah, and that's cool. So thank you very much. Um, all of my stuff um, you can find on my site, genmoney.biz. That's a real site. That's a real email. Um, and if you have any questions, like, you can ask on Twitter. That's me. It's weird. It's cool. It's fine. Um, but, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. That was great. I love the way that you build up and, and let us sort of watch the magic happen. <laughs> Do you want to join me in the lounge for a sure. brief chat? We have some questions for you. Oh, don't People actually asking questions on the hashtag. Which is great. I think people oh. are starting to wake up. So, one of the questions is like, when you're making CSS art, have you found any features in CSS that you miss? Um, features in CSS that I miss. So, I mean, I think everyone like is just dying for like CSS variables, but I feel like preprocessors is sort of like fix that. I use SAS like the first time for like this project, like for the first time from scratch from a project. I've gone into projects that already had it written so I knew it from there. Um, this time around I was like, I'm gonna use it because I need variables. Specifically, um, and Brian told me about scaling, but I have a resolution variable so I can just, multi I have resolution multiplied by the sizes of everything in case like when I got up on stage and I checked the resolution, my stuff was way too large. So I just like decreased it like on the fly and that was like pretty great. That's pretty cool. Um, I mean, I don't really, think about things that I'm missing from languages too much because I'm not really involved in like the creation of new features and stuff and I don't like arguing online, believe it or not. Really? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I like provoking but not like getting it all there. But no, no, CSS, like I see a lot of cool things being worked into it. Um, I'm, I was mostly, when I first started g getting into it, I was more worried about like creating responsive stuff and like media queries sort of solve that problem. Mm. Variables, that's, I'm all about it. And math, math with the variables and it multiplying and all that sort of stuff like that. I love math, so I'm happy to see that starting to take off. Yeah, I think we've seen some. I'm sure everyone um, hates that, but whatever. Really cool CSS mathy demos over the past couple of years, I think. Or maybe yeah. I've just been noticing them. Yeah. Um, where do you get inspiration for your great work? Um, where do I get inspiration? Um, I get, I go to museums and galleries a lot. I see like, I call it in real life art, like non-digital stuff. Um, and a lot, I mean, a lot of my work is recreating already existing like fine art in like a sort of digital way, like using JavaScript. Um, and so just going out and seeing stuff and thinking like, oh, this is like really cool. This can be like interpreted in a certain way, like, mm. you know, in some sort of generative format. And then like it pushes me to learn about the artists and stuff like that. And then also like what my friends are doing. Um, 
you know, Brian is an excellent musician, and, like, when we were talking about speaking here, we were both, like, we're going to do, like, audio and visualization stuff and stuff like that. And so just surrounding myself with friends who are in the tech world but also are much more into other things outside of tech, you know, music, writing, journalism, art, and stuff like that. So the people I surround myself with are my inspiration. Um, there is a, uh, a question. You started with a question, really. Um, who put the bomb? Who put the bomb? And then you talked about who took the bomb. Who took the bomb? But why? Why are we not hearing more about who took the bomb? Like, is, is why isn't the government releasing any more information about who took the bomb? I am not at the liberty to say that. Um, I would like to get back into my home country after this trip. <laughs> that's uh, that's fair. We can maybe we can talk when these when yeah, these are off. Yeah, we'll talk fair. after. Okay, cool. Um, now, because I stalk you on Twitter, I know that you've actually got quite a lot of other art projects. Is there any of those that you want to give some shout-outs to? Plugs? Yeah. Plugs. Um, my two main art projects are make8bitart.com. It's an in-browser app for drawing pixel art, which is one of my favorite things to make. Uh, and then there's vart, vart.institute, um, which is my art blog where I talk about art history um, and use code to sort of teach it and learn it as well. So if you're into art, check it out. If you're not into art, what is wrong with you? Figure yourselves out. <laughs> Excellent. One final question, because um, you have inspired a few people here today. Is that demo going to be available for them to play with and do yes. their own thing? Yeah, I'm going to, when I get to that table, I'm going to make the private GitHub repo public. And yeah, so github.com slash genshiffer. And it will be called um, Who Took the Bomb? Who Visualized the Bomb? Because I did. Great. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you.